All right, if you are watching this video, then you have clicked on the help button for the cost analysis uh, module within the BMP trains model. Uh, I'm going to run through a quick example that helps um, illustrate how to, 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 to use this uh, module. Uh, so um, first, we're, we'll, we'll talk about uh, kind of some of the specifics of a uh, example problem. So. Uh, for, the, for the purposes of this example, we're going to assume we're located in Jacksonville. Um, we want to achieve an efficiency of 80% removal for T and TP. Um, we're dealing with a small two-acre catchment. Um, we have pre-development conditions as shown here, and then we have post-development conditions as shown here as well. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is uh, look at a single site. Um, that has 40% um, of it is, is going to consist of the building itself, 50% um, of it will consist of a parking lot, and 10% um, needs to consist of green space. So um, uh, uh, half of the green space uh, will be available for um, either a natural area or a retention basin. Um, what we want to do is we want to evaluate um, two different BMPs and see what is the most cost-effective solution between either um, dry retention or um, pervious pavements um, and, or is the most cost-effective solution some combination of the two of those BMPs. So um, we're going to perform a um, net present worth cost analysis using the BMP trains model. Um, we're going to base this on a 20-year projection so that we look at you know the, uh, the, the life of the project um, and, and we're going to look at we're going to look at just three scenarios um, so uh, th th those are shown right here. So we're going to do, um, uh, well, what I'll show is scenario one um, and scenario three and scenario five. Uh, so um, a couple things with cost data is cost data is uh, pretty tough to, 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 to come across. Um, it's, it's highly variable. Um, it, it, it changes, you know, based on where you are regionally. Um, are there any big projects that are taking place that are maybe soaking up a lot of local resources? Um, but it also changes with time. So, um, you know, based on, you know, the economy and the market, uh, that will also dictate how much uh, uh, it will cost to, 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 to do some of these different BMPs. Um, we do provide some um, cost reference information, um, such as the, uh, uh, the inflation calculator by the U.S. Department of Labor um, Statistics. Uh, and that's something that's uh, shown right now on the screen. Um, you know, we, we for, for the purposes of this example, we're uh, basing the interest rate on the um, World Bank for the U.S. Um, we're going to use the most recent data, which is 2014, um, which is a 1.8% um, interest rate. Uh, we, we also hit, uh, looked in the literature for cost data for pervious concrete, uh, which is as shown. Um, and then... Uh, uh, the other, well, one thing to note is that this cost data is for pervious asphalt, so we're just going to assume that it's equivalent. Um, and it's also a 2012 dollars, so we need to bring it up to um, current 2016 dollars. Um, we also looked up and found that maintenance is, is typically about 4% of the BMP cost, um, and, and, and the data is from the reference shown here. Um, so, if we convert everything over to 2016 dollars, um, we see the uh, overall cost for scenarios one, three, and five, or as shown on the screen. Um, next, we look at um, retention basin cost. So, uh, this also is a value derived from the literature, um, is from the source shown on the screen. And the typical cost was about 50 cents to a dollar per cubic foot of, of storage provided. Um, again, this is in, in $1997, so we're going to um, bring it up to current $2016 um, and, and convert it over to cost per acre foot of storage provided. Um, and, and that basically equivalates to a, a, a little over $45,000 per acre foot. Um, and then for, for this BMP, um, we're also assuming that maintenance is about 4% of the construction cost. And so for the different scenarios, it's, it's as shown here. Um, land cost uh, is an important thing to consider when you're uh, evaluating the cost of um, a BMP. If you're having to buy additional land, um, then that's something that needs to be accounted for. 
There's multiple sources that provide um, cost information. Um, property appraisers, Zillow, USDA, and LandWatch.com. So um, all of these should be, you know, consulted when you're when you're looking to um, provide uh, land cost data for uh, for a specific project. Um, so for for this example, we used um, uh, LandWatch and had a cost for one acre of land at about a little over half a million dollars. Um, so the land cost. Uh, additional land would only need to be purchased for um, scenario five. Um, scenarios one and one and three would still be contained within the original two acres, but for scenario five, we would need to purchase an additional 0.12 acres. Um, so that means there's an additional cost of a little over sixty-two thousand um, dollars for uh, scenario five. Um, and now we're going to switch over to the BNP Trains model where I can show you how this, uh, this, this feature is used. Okay, so uh, now we're here in the uh, BNP Trains model and we're going to uh, run through the cost example. Um, I, I, I do want to say that um, this uh, already has scenarios one and three completed. Um, and all the data is input for scenario five, but I'm gonna quickly go over scenario five so that we can go to the cost features and um, show you what the um, result of uh, this analysis was. So I'm gonna click here to start. Um, as you can see in the general site, we've already have our project named as cost example. Um, for this particular one, we were in uh, meteorological zone four. Um, also had 50 inches of uh, mean annual rainfall. And then the specified removal efficiency of 80%, which was uh, per the um, example problem. So next we'll go to watershed characteristics. Um, so here we're dealing with just a single catchment. Uh, we're just calling the catchment example. And then we're uh, assuming our pre-development is agricultural general, and then our post is low intensity commercial. And then I've also gone through and, and input all of the um, appropriate site information here for uh, the, this example problem. So now I'll go over to uh, stormwater treatment analysis. So for this particular example uh, or scenario, we had both retention and pervious pavement. So I'm going to go to the retention base of BMP. Um, and here uh, we were pr providing 1.325 inches of storage over the um, watershed area. Um, so that gives us a resultant efficiency of about a little under uh, 77%. Um, so then I'm going to go to stormwater treatment analysis and then go look at pervious pavements. And for this particular uh, problem, we had said we're going to use pervious concrete at a 6 inch thickness uh, over top of 7 inches of number 57 stone. Um, and then uh, the, the area in the parking lot that we'd be providing was 0.15 acres. And then so based on that, you know, the model calculated that, you know, we'd be providing about uh, almost a 24% um, removal of nitrogen and phosphorus. So if we go to stormwater treatment analysis and then catchment treatment results, uh, we see uh, for our example basin, we have a retention basin and pervious pavement. Uh, it's a single catchment shown in text and in, um, uh, in, in a picture. Yeah, summarizes our, our pre and post development uh, nutrient loading and also shows our um, target and provided uh, uh, total nitrogen and total phosphorus efficiencies. And then we can see that we have uh, met our target objectives. Um, so now that we know we've met our target objectives, now we want to go through and see, all right, well, how much does this solution cost? compared to the previous two that, that we evaluated. So if I go over here to this go to cost analysis worksheet, it brings me over here. So um, on this worksheet, it, 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 there's, there's a number of um, uh, data points that, that need to be entered in. So everything in blue is a, is a user input. So first we need to specify what type of analysis we're doing. Are we doing a net present worth? Are we doing a capital cost? So for this, we're doing a net present worth analysis. Um, you can run up to 25 different scenarios on here. Um, for this one, we're just doing, this is scenario three um, of the, of, of, of the uh, different scenarios that, that we're examining here. 
the mass of total nitrogen and total phosphorus removed is carried over from the summary page over to this page so we can see how many kilograms per year we're removing of each. Um, here we specify our interest rate of 1.8% um, and then our project duration of 20 years. Now sometimes you'll use a BNP such as stormwater harvesting or rainwater harvesting that will offset some other traditional costs um, associated with, with a building. So um, you can then um, offset the cost of water, for example, um, in, 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 in this analysis. And so what you would do here is just specify what the cost of water is per thousand gallons so that the model can calculate that benefit. Um, so if we scroll down here to the uh, main table, you can see we have retention basin and pervious pavement. Um, automatically, the model carries over the volume treated um, in acre feet, so 0.22 for the retention basin and 0.03 for the pervious pavement. Um, as I said before, this is going to require some additional land um, to construct this scenario because um, the ret retention basin has to be so large that um, it's going to require us to, to, to purchase an additional uh, little bit of land. And so the cost for that has been entered in. The pervious pavement, we don't need to put that in because that's going to be part of the land that we would have had to buy anyways. Um, the expected life for both of these BMPs we just put in is 20 years, that's our evaluation time. Um, if you put something less than your evaluation time, then you need to make sure that you, you provide also the uh, BMP uh, replacement cost. So right over here it says estimated future cost of replacement. Uh, if you're looking at evaluating it over a longer term period than what the BMP will last for, then you need to specify what that future replacement cost will be. Um, next, we'll put in our um, uh, fixed costs and uh, variable costs. So fixed costs would be like uh, mobilization or, thing, uh, or, or, or activities like that. Um, for this particular example, that is actually built into the, um, the, the uh, the cost relative to the volume, so we only put in the cost in, in dollars per acre foot um, here. And then we also want to specify our estimated annual BMP maintenance cost. And then so that uh, comes from uh, the 4% of the, of the construction cost that we talked about um, earlier. So based on that, um, the, uh, the model goes through and calculates the, the total annual cost and um, your, your present worth life cycle cost, um, and then it sums everything up here. So then, um, oh, well, real quick before we do this, um, I had mentioned earlier that we did provide some cost reference data. So if you, if you click on this button, it will actually redirect you to a website which has links for um, all of the, the cost reference data that, that, um, that we're providing. Um, for now, though, we're just going to do our cost analysis, so I'll just click on this perform cost analysis. It'll ask me if I updated my scenario because you don't want to overwrite your previous scenario, so um, we did do that, so we'll say yes. And then it gives you just one more warning, are you absolutely sure you want to do this? And yes, we do. So we're going to hit yes. And then, um, and then the model takes us to this page. Um, and it shows us, so for scenario one, we had a total cost of 82741 uh, for scenario two, we had 60,000, and for scenario three, we had 91,500. Um, and then here it also shows the cost of nitrogen um, and phosphorus, uh, the cost removed per kilogram, and then the total removed over that 20 year period. And then so we can look at these charts, and it shows us very clearly that scenario two is our optimal solution. Um, same thing when we look at the cost of nitrogen and phosphorus uh, removed as well, so the cost per, per kilogram of that. So this can be a really helpful tool when you're, you know, you have many different BMP options that you can implement on your site. Um, so then it, it, it just comes down to what is the most cost effective solution I can do so that you can provide your client with uh, the most uh, uh, efficient use of their, um, of their money while still meeting their uh, regulatory water quality um, requirements. And at this time, uh, you will be directed back to the BMP trans model.